Hi everyone, in today's video I will show you my process for creating stylized trees and rocks. This workflow is also compatible with Unity, Unreal and any other game engine of your choice. You will be able to purchase all of the assets you see in this video on my donation page. As per usual, you can find all of the timestamps right here in case you want to skip ahead. Inside a blender, I start by adding a plane and deleting all of the edges except for one. I then add two subdivision surface modifiers and a skin modifier in this order. I also make sure that the skin modifier is set to shade smooth. The first sub D controls the smoothness of the branches. I personally keep it at a low amount. The second one controls the resolution of the model. I keep this one quite high. We can start by creating the tree trunk. Using references and sketches to guide the process is always useful. I like to draw before modeling, but this step is up to you. You can use Ctrl A to control the thickness of the skin modifier and Shift D to duplicate the edges to create your own branches. If geometry doesn't show up for you, make sure to mark one of your vertices as root. Now you can go crazy with the shapes. What I like to do is loosely tracing the reference I drew earlier and freestyling a little. I really enjoy making trees with crazy shapes and I always try to bend reality when I can. The most important part, in my opinion, is to give the tree a distinct silhouette. When I'm finished, I duplicate the entire tree and move it to the side. The reason I do it is because we will use this as the low poly to bake our detailed sculpt later on. Before sculpting, I remesh, so all of the separate faces merge into one object. I like to use these four brushes. I give my model three passes of detail. Let's go through all of them. In my first pass, I smooth the shape where needed. I also add more foundation to the trunk and start sketching the bark. In my second pass, I add all the smaller crevices. I try to draw them in a way that flows from the bark to the branches. In my third pass, I focus on flattening the edges of the sculpt. This is the most time consuming part, but I think it really helps the shape stand out more. Before baking and texturing, I like creating the leaves. I just create a meta ball and duplicate it where I would like the leaves to appear. When I'm happy with it, I convert it into a mesh and duplicate it. We will transfer the shading data from this onto the leaves later. It will give the crown a nicer feel. This is just the base that I use to spawn the particles on. You can either use geometry nodes or the particle system to do this. Create a plane and assign a simple leaf texture. I made this one very quickly in Krita. For the particle system method, add the particle system to the tree crown, select hair, change the render to object, and choose the plane you created earlier. Then, change the density and size to your desired amount. I also like to play with the randomness a lot. When you're done, make the instances real, select one of the particles, and in the data properties, click this number right here. If you don't do this, Blender will probably die on you. The final step is to transfer the data from the base we created earlier. This is pretty easy. Add a data transfer modifier to your leaf object, check face corner data, and enable custom normals. If the results are not what you expect, try checking the object transform button. Otherwise, just make the objects overlap. If you don't like the result, you can also transfer the data from a sphere or any other object. Finally, we can move on to the baking. I like to take the low poly model we previously moved to the side and use a shrink wrap modifier. You might have to inflate or separate parts of the model and reunite them later. You can spend more time adjusting the topology if you feel like that is needed. UV unwrapping is pretty easy. Just think of every branch as cylinders. Try to minimize the amount of stretching and you're good to go. It's also good to check for any issues with normals. If you're lazy, you can also just remesh and decimate your sculpt. Organize your models, export them at the same position and bring them into your preferred texturing software. Mine is Substance Painter, but you can use a free alternative like Armor Paint or Quixel Mixer. The rocks are a lot easier, thankfully. Start with any shape you want and extrude it in this fashion. Now, using a flat brush, I start polishing the shape further. Again, references and drawings will really help you understand the shape of the objects you are creating. I then copy and paste the same shape until I'm happy with the formation. The final step is to remesh and further sculpt the details. This is the most time consuming part and it's what will make the model shine. Try experimenting with different starting shapes for different results. I keep the rocks as simple as I possibly can, since adding too much detail will make them seem extremely busy when cloned everywhere. Since these shapes are pretty big, 
we can create a low poly by remeshing again at a lower density. A better, cleaner solution is to use the free software Instant Meshes. Now we are ready to bake. The texturing process will be a bit different. In my smart material, I don't want to add too much detail because I want the rocks to avoid looking repetitive when duplicated over entire scenes. This is the perfect use case for a simple procedural texturing technique called triplanar mapping. With some shader magic, we can project moss on the top of our rocks, making them look more cohesive. I hope you guys found this information useful. If you want to support me, you can purchase the tree and rock pack on my donation page. It includes game ready models with LOD setup, as well as all the shaders and textures. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know and check out more of my work on my channel.